Well, go ahead, Caleb. I'm going to turn it over to you, and you know you can introduce the guests that we have. Uh, so go ahead, Caleb. Well, sure, yeah. So obviously we've been following a story that's been coming out of uh, West Virginia. Uh, I actually first learned about this story myself, I don't know, maybe I'd say approximately a couple months ago or something like that. But at any rate, there was a, uh, my wife just happened to be listening, watching the local uh, news station and there was a story on there about a man by the name of uh, Thomas David House of Deegan who was being accused by the according to the news the news report he was being accused by the state of West Virginia of uh, attempting to overthrow the state government in um, Charleston West Virginia now obviously since then I've learned um, basically the uh, the plan for the listeners that uh, don't that don't know this yet he was basically calling he had a series of educational conference calls uh, leading up to this this, was, this event was supposed to happen on September 24th uh, he had hundreds of people participating on these conference calls and he issued a call to action amongst uh, he was calling upon some uh, militias even from surrounding states to basically meet at the the state capitol complex in Charleston, West Virginia, on September 24th, and they were going to execute citizens' arrests, uh, basically for all the politicians down there, including the governor. Now, I think they were going to, they were all, everybody was going to be given the opportunity to resign, I believe, and then if not, then they would um, arrest them. They would uh, basically keep the government uh, running, eventually hold trials for treason, and then eventually have the set up the uh, elections, but basically in an effort to uh, take the government back, so to speak, to uh, we the people, because you know we are the highest level of government, and the government only functions according to our uh, consent, according to the Declaration of Independence, of course. So that's when I began to look into this uh, story myself, and then of course I stumbled across. Hudoc.info. It's Phil Hudoc's uh, website. I encourage everybody to go check that out. That's the most ex uh, authoritative um, website on this whole entire matter, of course. It's a great site. Yes, it is. So I found his uh, number, so I gave him a call and asked him to come on to the show, uh, which, of course, we did. Now, um, So now we have on the phone with us, we have um, uh, D. Corley. Heather Swenson and also Carl, uh, Gene Stoniker, who we have not had on the show yet. He is one of, uh, along with Phil and Thomas, they are um, filed the petition to the uh, West Virginia State Supreme Court last year, um, basically uh, exposing the fact that the, uh, the state government is actually privately held corporations posing as government, and we're basically petitioning uh to re to restore the constitutional form back into the the state of course and so uh but at any rate uh we also have phil hudock on the line as well now thomas did cancel that event that was supposed to happen once he realized that his uh audience on these conference calls had been infiltrated by uh, federal agents he had been baited to say certain things uh Blah blah blah. So they basically ran, Caleb. They basically ran a COINTELPRO operation on, on him, just like we see them do that on at every level of civil rights uh, activists. Yeah, pretty much. Obviously, they, they can pretty much infiltrate and hijack any and every grassroots movement they uh, wish it seems like now. But, but at any rate, uh, I think what I'd like to do now is uh, well, obviously. Uh, Thomas's trial, of course, was uh, a couple weeks ago. They, the, the, uh, the, ver the jury did issue a uh, guilty verdict. Uh, he was uh, on the grounds of um, terroristic threats. Uh, it was basically a speech crime because of things that he said on a conference call. He, one of the federal agents asked him if, well, will the police be on our side? Uh, and if we, uh, if the, if, if this, if the police all pull up in their vehicles. And we are completely surrounded, and they get out of their vehicles. What should we do? And Thomas said, "Well, I suggest that you shoot them." He also said that we are at war. Well, that's that was a reference to the 1917 Trading with the Enemies Act, and then in comparison with the 
1933 War Powers Act, where uh, we the people have been declared enemies of the state by our own government. But uh, in trying to keep this short, uh, one thing I was not aware of on the last week's broadcast when I was talking about this, uh, I, Phil Hudock had, was interviewed by um, Hoppy Kirchival. He's from the West Virginia Metro News. I did listen to it after the show. This is very important because this filled in a lot of holes for me because um, basically Thomas's plan seemed to be modeled after the, the Bundy Ranch standoff from a couple years ago in Nevada when the Bundys, uh, they had such a large showing of force amongst their supporters and from the community, of course, where the government basically, they backed off and there was no shots fired and everything turned out, uh, it worked out in, in, a peaceful, in a peaceful manner. So it was never Thomas's desire or intent for anybody to get, to get hurt by any means. So but anyway, that being said, uh, I'd like to go ahead and bring on uh, D. D and Heather, by the way, they're only they're the um, the only two individuals who were actually uh, inside the courtroom during the whole entire trial. Uh, I was there for about half the time. Uh, Carl was in there for a little bit until he got arrested. But <laughs> but at any rate, uh, D. Yeah, I'd like to Hi. go ahead and bring uh, D. Thanks for coming on here. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, go ahead and give us your take on what you saw uh, in, the, in the courtroom, of course. Well, there was a lot that I saw in the courtroom, and the main thing that I saw was that the people don't matter um, in our government. What matters to the people does not matter to our government. They basically do what they want. Um, which is pretty much what Judge Reed was saying to Thomas. Um, this was this was quite eye opening to me. It's the first time I've actually sat in or been involved in a court case that was this arrogant and um, it, the judge actually came out in the hearing and told Thomas, your supreme law of the land is not acknowledged or recognized in this courtroom. I mean, what more can you say? Uh, that just, you might as well just close the book. Exactly. I mean, that, that, that kind of, this is Nathan Lawrence in here, that kind of goes along with what I, what I was saying at the beginning of the show, that, um, you know, they're, they're just gaming everything right in front of our face. I mean, you look at, that yeah. kind of goes into the, the, to the election and what's going on. They're basically stealing the election from candidates who are winning, and they're telling us that your vote doesn't matter. And they just openly tell us now we have no rights and nothing matters. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, why would we have rights? Why would it matter when the American people don't stand up? Every other country, if you think about it, they will get out in the streets and say, we aren't going to take this. We tell each other, and then we sit back down and go back to our daily routine. And that's what they expect from us, and that's what we know we're going to. They know we're going to do, and that's what Thomas was putting a call out to the people for. Stand up! Here's your opportunity. Let's gather in one place. Let's make West Virginia the starting point of taking back the government that belongs to the people. And this is what happened, because there probably was more plants on that call than there was. Anybody else? I don't know for a fact, but nobody showed up. He did call it off, but at the same time, when do we ever really show up? Two people, three with Caleb actually showed up in that courtroom, four with Carl. Unfortunately, he didn't get to stay very long because hey, no one him, was allowed to record. I hold, hold that thought. We're coming into a break. We'll touch upon that right when we get back after this commercial break. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Battle of New Orleans Radio right here on WGS. So we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. You're listening to Battle of New Orleans Radio. I'm Nathan Lawrence, and our good buddy, Goyam, just stepped in the studio. Where you at, Goyam? I'm back. 
I'm back. Just got out of work. Been working all day for my shekels. That's good. We, we got we got Caleb on Skype, and then we got a full uh, phone line of guests. Well, Caleb, I'm going to turn it over to you. Go ahead and do your thing. Sure. Well, the, I'm going to go ahead and uh, – <coughs> oh, pardon me. At any rate, um, I to see. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring um, Heather on at this point and uh, have her go ahead and uh, share some of her observations. How you doing, Heather? Good. Um, well, I noticed many things. Uh, one thing that was prominent was um, the one bailiff that was sitting in the back of the courtroom. <clears throat> he was uh, he's a sheriff, and he made sure to point out at one point that something to the effect of, you know, uh, he wanted to know how we knew Thomas. And, um, you know, we explained it to him, and he said, well, I hope you all know, you know, we aren't, you know, we don't hold any, you know, grudge or anything towards him or something to that effect. And, um, you know, he, he was like, he's doing a great job, you know. So, you know, they're clearly not fearful of Thomas, you know. And, um, in fact, sort of seemed to support him, you know, in a way. Um, so that reminded me, I'm like, you know, three times I think I heard the Constitution mentioned by Thomas. Uh, during the trial, and in, if I'm right, it could be maybe one or more or one or less, but um, every time he brought up that word, the prosecutor objected. And I thought, okay, and once they even sent the jury out and then all went in the back to discuss, it was almost like you could almost feel what was happening in the back. You know, like, if you mention the Constitution again, you know, and I just thought, okay, so we have these sheriffs, we have these public servants who take an oath to support and defend us is what it's supposed to be. To, you know what I mean? To the Constitution. Yet it does not play there at all. It is strictly statutory, as uh, Jeffrey B. Reed said in his courtroom. So you have a bunch of people who, uh, public servants who took an oath, right? And that mm. oath isn't in effect. They're literally told that while we were <clears throat> at that trial. And w where are they to stand up and say, oh, hold on a minute. I took an oath to support, and, and the Constitution was in that oath, both, you know, the state and the, and the U.S. Constitution. So why, where were they standing up going, uh, this isn't right here? Well, now, apparently... Apparently, that oath of office is now just a formality, just a lip service. Doesn't really mean anything to them, apparently. Yeah, and uh, so I, Thomas, uh, brought to light a lot of information, and you know, the news station was there uh, videotaping, but they taped the whole thing. But do you see an ounce of it on their website? Maybe just a short video clip, maybe a couple minutes, if that. <laughs> oh, no, they, they scrubbed. They every, removed that, too? Hmm. They scrubbed everything about Thomas off of their what, off of WTAP. The, wow. the, the media is controlled and owned. They are complicit uh, in, in the uh, fall of this republic, for sure. You know, they are definitely not our friends. That's right. And uh, he did a good job, you know, uh, putting a lot of great information out there so people can see what is happening and the other thing was he brought to light this sovereign citizen stuff that's happening where you know uh you could be just one of the people like he was just one of the people which is what i think we all are and uh but yet you're you're labeled as a terrorist you know in a group that holds no meaning sovereign citizen has no meaning and uh he did a great job bringing that information to light too um, you know, I, I'm really proud of what he's done. So, um, yeah, me too. <clears throat> awesome deal. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, <coughs> pardon me. Well, um, let's see, due to, um, uh, I know we got to the end of the hour here. If you don't mind, I'd like to go ahead and bring on, uh, we'll try to get bringing in Carl in toward the end of the hour, but I'd like to bring on, uh, Jane, Jane Stoniker for right now. Hello, Gene. Are you here? Yeah, I'm on here. Oh, okay. Hi, Gene. Well, uh, if you don't mind, I asked you to come on here to basically just kind of recap, uh, just a brief summarization of uh, 
some of the backstory to the before this whole incident even occurred. Uh, you, um, Phil, and Thomas, of course, filed your all's uh, petition uh, through the State Supreme Court of Appeals. Can you kind of summarize what that was all about for us, please? Uh, well, we basically um, uh, petitioned our legislature and uh, gave them information on the War Powers Act, how that uh, we were all uh, declared enemies in uh, uh, 1933. Of course, you had the War Powers Act actually was 1917, but then they, um, with the Banking Act of 33, it was brought into to play uh, as far as uh, making every uh, American citizen the enemy, whereas the 1917 War Powers Act um, only specified certain people who were there uh, from other countries temporarily and um, and didn't have uh, citizenship or status as Americans. But then that all changed in '33, and uh, that that uh, allowed the banks to uh, take everybody's gold and silver, which uh, you have to remember back then you still had silver, uh, silver dollars and silver coins and gold dollars and gold coins instead of paper. So that allowed the the bankers to uh, take over the, you know, take the money and. Uh, and then when when the citizens were declared enemies, then they also were granted the War Powers Act, so you were an enemy. And, and now when the president mentions uh, war on poverty, war on this, war on that, well, we're at war. So the war powers come into effect. We're under war powers. We, we have been. So uh, the president basically can can and has done uh, what he wants to, mm-hmm. and um, so we um, we brought these things up um, in our petition to the legislature, but um, you know we got no answers. I think one legislator answered, and uh, uh, he mainly was just. Uh, asking questions, not really doing anything or helping any, but um, out of all the legislatures, le- legislators that we petitioned, uh, just the one answered and the others ignored us. And we had previously been to the Attorney General with um, uh, some of these same things, issues with uh, incorporation of the churches in West Virginia, which uh, the churches that are incorporated are violating the Constitution because the West Virginia Constitution says that they will not incorporate, yet uh, the Attorney General's office and everybody else in the state allows them to, and that way they um, they can control them. So uh, that, that keeps certain politicians out of the church if you can't as a church, uh, you can't have one person who you favor come in and speak in your church or or uh, have part in your church service unless you have someone who completely is, you know, opposed to what the church stands for. So it, it's, it has silenced the churches in West Virginia. So that was part of the petitioning process along with showing that we were uh, the enemies of our own country Hmm. and um, so that that led led to us to um, to actually petition the uh, Supreme Court with with this information and uh, then when we did that we got into things that showed uh, that weren't really a part of what we originally started with. Uh, It started showing that uh, everywhere we turned, everything was a corporation. So uh, 
we now know, and we proved to the court that um, the whole state's incorporated. Uh, we have no sovereign state, and uh, it's just one big corporation. And from there, we found out that everybody else is one corporation. Uh, we, the people, are a corporation. They have uh, uh, they have you, and possibly they trade you on the stock market stock market but anyway that's that's where it led to with the Supreme Court and finally uh, of course we used our our rightful um, names in our petition as a uh, upper and lower case not all capitals and they dealt with us with that yeah and uh, they recognized us as uh, sovereign because we didn't we didn't come to them as a, as a corporation as a corporate entity uh, so that's how they dealt with us of course they ended up um denying our everything but we had already they they'd already defaulted on everything and mm. and they just addressed one issue out of many many issues in in their their final thing and and that was just uh uh, releasing certain individuals from the the lawsuit uh, by by using them as there where they had all previously been named all capital letters. Then in their final decree, there they they came as as the rightful. Well, ho hold that thought right there. We're coming into a break. Look, ladies and gentlemen, listen to Battle of New Orleans Radio right here. In the heart of the Crescent City, 990 AM, WGSO. We'll be right back. <music> Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. You're listening to Battle of New Orleans Radio. You know, this is a very important uh, case they're talking about. So, look, anybody wants to get more information on this, please go to hudoc, uh, dot Was it hudoc.info, Caleb? Yeah, H-U-D-O-K dot info. That's right. Go check that out. Look, Caleb, I'm going to turn it over to you. It's all you, babe. Go ahead. All right. Well, I'd like to go ahead and bring uh, Phil, Phil Hudock on. Uh, hey, hi, Phil. How you doing? Uh, thank you, Caleb. Glad to be on. Very good. Well, um, thought maybe share some of your thoughts. Actually, if you don't mind, if you think it would be good, uh, what are some of the – what what is Thomas looking at right now as far as moving forward? What steps do you think he's looking to take right now? Well, Thomas is very upbeat. You know, he's taking the high road. Uh, at one point, he even released nine state troopers from uh, um, from being sequestered because uh, there was a funeral they wanted to go to, and so he could have could have used them as uh, witnesses in his uh, for his defense. But um, he actually released them. I believe I was the only witness he called in his defense. Um, you know, he's uh, he's proven uh, as, uh, with Gene and I that, that all state government has, has been overthrown. So when they say he was overthrowing state government, no, he was trying to return it to the rule of law. And And everyone should think about this as far as protection of of the people you know we all think about the second amendment which was given for our protection protection from our government and besides the second amendment uh something else that we have for our protection is the rule of law if you don't have the rule of law and you have a government that will go to no ends using the Hegelian dialectic, divide and conquer, and order out of chaos, uh, and and use foreign troops, and and just about anything they can dream up from from uh, the dark side. Uh, you know, we we have to fight for the rule of law. Um, we have to defend what God gave us as blessings, but He gave us responsibilities with those blessings. And a lot of people talk about rights, and, and yeah, we call them rights, but if you think about it, a right is something, uh, it isn't something you have to do, it's something you can do. Whereas God gave us blessings, but he gave us responsibilities, things that we have to do 
to have those freedoms, okay? And uh, so, you know, one of the things that is evident here in this case is that it's the people's duty, and they are the highest, they are the originators of the government, they are the highest level, uh, they are the government. Uh, we just have representatives to represent us. And uh, uh, one of the most despicable institutions in this country is the media, known as the fourth estate, because they haven't done their job. Had they done their job, we wouldn't have got into this situation. It wouldn't have been hidden that for 80-some years, the West Virginia Constitution and every other state constitution and the federal Constitution has been suspended. Now the Constitution wasn't perfect, and 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 Thomas knew that, but he was he knew, and and laid out a plan to actually get back to something that that people could use, at least for the time being, until they actually came up with something even better than than what we were given because our Constitution. Uh, and I didn't know this until until I met Thomas and, and did more research. And I've been in the battle for over 20 years, uh, but it's been a long, slow educational process. And, and hey, that's hey, Phil, let me interject here just real quick. If you don't mind summarizing about the next minute and a half, because I want to be able to sneak in Carl here of them as well. Sorry about that, but go ahead. Sure, sure. So, you know, what's Thomas doing right now? Well, He's mainly interested in getting the truth out. And, you know, we're trying to get all the transcripts, the court reporter audios. Um, Gene and I are addressing a county commission. We're going to do a second address to them, giving them the truth. You know, we went to the highest level of government in West Virginia, the state Supreme Court. We saw what happened. Now we're starting at the, at the uh, you know, ground level, grassroots level with the county commission now and saying, you know what? There are felonies going on, and there's such a thing as misprision of felony, which is if you know there's a felony going on and you don't do something, then you are guilty of a felony yourself. So we are taking the responsibility, the knowledge of those responsibilities and the facts to the people who are trusted, who are given uh, rep you know, representation status of for us, and we're, ask we're telling them, you have to do something. Hmm. Right on, definitely. All right, cool deal. Thank you, Phil. Uh, let's go ahead and bring uh, Carl on in here. Go ahead and jump in here, Carl. Well, I've heard uh, several people speak to the to the issues, but let's cut to the chase. Whose fault is this? The yeah. fault is ours. It has always been ours because we created this and it's up to us to control it. And what Thomas did is nothing short of heroic. There's no question about that. And other people are, are, are similarly trying to do heroic things, like uh, the boy Fenneckham, to mention one. What we have is a document that all of these people, all of these players, that were involved in the trial of Thomas David House of Beacon. All of them swore an oath to, every last one of them. And every last one of them is in violation of that oath. Oh, we got about they two minutes. We know it. And unless we decide collectively as a people to hold them accountable for that, then nothing is going to change. They were, they're going to statutorily remove every right that they are supposed to protect. They're going to eliminate them, and they're doing that, every one of them. And, it, it, yes, it is our fault because we're not standing. That's what Thomas was asking. That's what I'm asking. That's what many people are asking. Stand. Get in the face of the perpetrators of this evil and... Do what you can to stop them. That's our only choice. You know that, that that's some great advice. You know, I, I hope Thomas is like the first wave of the revolution. You know, we need we need to come behind him with the second and the third wave for sure. He is, awesome. He is, he is the vanguard. All right. Well, thank you guys for 
coming on. Um, also, want to thank you, Carl, for your uh, for your providing your media as well, your media coverage, the YLN TV, I think it's called. Yeah, I'm 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 really posting this stuff on the standretina.com. Uh, everything that I'm doing is, is mainly going over there right now. There's 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 little point to having the redundancy. We need to consolidate this stuff into a place where uh, everybody can go and get all the information. That is one such place. So, uh, scan, scanretina.com. Scanretina.com. Um, Please use that. There's it's a it's a marvelous resource that all of you need to, need to see everything that you didn't know. It's right we'll, there for you. we'll definitely promote it for sure. All right, I really appreciate y'all for coming on. We'll have y'all back. We will not let this topic or issue die. Please go to hudoc.info. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to Battle of New Orleans right here at 990 AM WGSO.